What is up, world? Welcome to your daily fix. I am Matt Wazbinski. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 films I'm looking forward to seeing in 2014. Now, there's a ton of films coming out, so I want to start with my honorable mentions. The first one is Her. The reason that this is not on the list is because me and my sister actually just saw this today. It was a very interesting film. Very, very well done. The music was great. The cinematography was fantastic. The acting was really, really good. It's just such a weird concept, but um, I would highly recommend it. There are some very adult themes in it. But I would very much recommend it, um, you know, if you are comfortable with that kind of stuff. But, so that's not on my list. Uh, 300 Rise of an Empire is also on that list. Um, I just, I love the first movie, and this one kind of seems like a weird spin-off kind of thing. So, I loved how they did the first one, so I'm anxious to see it, but I'm not really sold on that yet. And then the third film is uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. Now, um, Captain America is a really cool story, really cool hero. Um, I like all the casting that they did in it. But um, once again, just another one where I like the first one. Uh, not super pumped about the second one, but I'm going to go see it, and it should be really good. Okay, at number 10, this is kind of a weird thing to do, but it's my list, so I'm going to do it all. Now, I'm going to throw all of the Hunger Games, The Hobbit, Dumb and Dumber, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, all those movies kind of in my number 10 spot to where I'm not necessarily excited for that movie in particular, but I really liked the other ones. I liked how they did it. And so I'm excited to see what's next. I'm excited to see Hunger Games kind of come to a close, The Hobbit come to a close. So not that movie in particular, but because of how they fit in with their other movies, that has me excited. So I'm just going to throw all of those together in the number 10 spot. At my number nine spot, I have The Monuments Men. Now this movie is packed with great actors. It's about a group of soldiers in World War II that have to go into Germany and actually recover all of this great artwork. And so it's one of those like s secret hidden agenda kind of war movies, uh, very time PC. And like I said, stacked with great actors. And so I'm really excited to kind of see that mix of action and kind of spy thriller movie and in a period piece. At number eight, I have RoboCop. Now hear me out. I know it's probably going to be like super corny. And even when the, they announced that they were going to do this movie, I'm like, really? Really? But a few things. One, I love Detroit. And RoboCop is a Detroit movie. We're actually building a RoboCop statue. And once again, when I first heard that, I'm like, really? But now I'm kind of like, eh, that's kind of awesome. So I'm super excited about it. I saw the trailer and I'm like, wow, that's actually really cool. It looks like one of those definite like popcorn movies where you're like you're not you know it's not gonna win an Oscar you know it's not gonna be you know this big epic but it's just a cool like boom 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 guns blazing robots futuristic sci-fi thing and so I'm really looking forward to it at number seven I have Muppets Most Wanted I loved what they did with the Muppet movies how they had all the celebrity cameos it reminded me a lot of the older Muppet movies from the 80s and it was fantastic and after seeing the previews and kind of seeing the general storyline where they have like the fake Kermit the Frog, Kermit the Frog here, and oh my gosh, it just looks great as Tina Fey in it. It has a lot of different celebrities, so I'm really looking forward. This seems like one of those just fun family movies that you can just go and see and feel like a kid again. At my number six spot, I have Noah. Now, this one in the Christian community is kind of up in the air because a lot of people are upset because it does not really look anything much like the biblical story besides there's a big boat, there's a guy named Noah, and there's a flood eventually. Uh, it looks like there's like a king that tries to like stop him from sailing and all this other extra stuff. But I think in the Christian community, it can also be a huge evangelistic tool because it gets people talking about the Bible. Um, same thing with when the Bible miniseries came out. A lot of people were complaining, well, oh, that's not theologically correct, or that's not biblically accurate. But you had millions of people talking about the Bible, so I always think that that's a good thing. Also, I think it just looks cool. Uh, Russell Crowe, even though he's a little bit crazy sometimes, is a great actor, and so is Emma Watson. So I think that this could be a really great film, um, one, to start conversations, and two, just to go out and enjoy. My number five movie is Maleficent. Now this one is a personal one for me. I love villains. I will go see any villain. What? Nope. 
Well, I wouldn't go see any villain, but I would go see any movie that has an awesome villain. I could really care less about the hero. I mean, every story, of course, the hero is going to win, blah, blah, blah. But the villain is actually what makes or breaks a movie for me. I think that Maleficent is one of the best, if not the best, Disney villain of all time. So I'm really anxious to see how Angelina Jolie uh, takes that character and molds it into a live-action character. How, with the focus on the villain, um, how that kind of fleshes out. I'm really hoping, um, even though I loved these movies, but like Megamind, Wreck-It Ralph, where the focus was on the bad guy, you know, but then it's like, oh, but he's really a good guy. And, like, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope she's just mean through the whole thing, and she's just, just taking over kingdoms, and just like, you know, making viney trees come out of the ground, and being like, ah, ha, 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 and like turning into green things, and she has like creepy crows. And I just hope she's just 100% villainous the entire time, and I will love it, and I will see it. So I really, really hope that it's like that. Uh, that would just make my day, but I'm really excited to see Maleficent. My number four pick is How to Train Your Dragon 2. We've been waiting for this film for a long time. This is a phenomenal film. And this is going to be a personal call out a little bit. My sister at Mel Waz on Twitter. Tweet her and tell her to see How to Train Your Dragon. She's never seen it and she's laughing at me because she's like, oh, it can't be that good. It's that good. It is a great film. I remember I felt the same exact way. I know that uh, another person on our staff, uh, Zach Taylor, he just did a video, go and check it out. But he loves that film and I love that film. It is great and I'm super excited to see where they take it now because I felt like it was kind of, it had a lot of opportunities, like it's a big open world, but the story itself felt kind of complete, like there wasn't like a cliffhanger where I felt like, oh, they're for sure making a second one. So I'm excited to see uh, where they're going to take it and what they're going to do with this second film. So, How to Train Your Dragon, once again, at Mel Waz on Twitter. Tweet her and tell her how amazing that movie is because she hasn't seen it. So tell her to see it, and then we can all together go see How to Train Your Dragon 2 because it's going to be great. Really? Yes. Number three, everything is awesome. I don't know if you know that song, but if you see the trailer, it's for the Lego movie. I am super excited about the Lego movie uh, for many of the same reasons that I'm excited to see the Muppet movie. Uh, it just seems fun. It seems like one of those things where it just reminds you of just being a kid, um, it doesn't have to have this big dramatic thing and like amazing cinematography, but it's a really cool idea. It just looks fun. It's packed with a bunch of different celebrity cameos, even though they're through voiceovers. But it just looks like a great time. Something that you and your friends can just go enjoy the movie. You don't have to worry about like like her, which once again, I just saw today. Like the whole time I'm thinking like, wow, like all the ramifications of this and where is this like story art going? And Lego movie's not gonna be like that. It's just funny, it's just fun, it's lighthearted, and I'm super excited to see um, maybe the opportunities for all the quote unquote Lego cameos and all the different Lego characters they're going to have and just kind of where they take that. And um, Lego is all about just being creative and creating, so I'm really excited to see the world that they're going to make out of that. My number two film is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I am so geeked about this movie for the pure fact that, once again, filled with villains. Oh, they're going to have all these different things. It looks like they're setting up the Sinister Six. I really like the direction they went with with The Amazing Spider-Man, sticking a lot more to the comic books. Uh, I love the actors and actresses that they picked to play these different roles. And so, like I said, the biggest reason that I wouldn't put this in all the other sequel categories is because of all the different villains. Now I'm hoping that it doesn't turn into a Spider-Man 3 to where you have way too many villains and they have too many stories and plot lines, but if they can set up this Sinister Six, which it looks like they're trying to do with all the different trailers and promos that they're doing, that would be amazing um, because I love villains and I think that Spider-Man has some of the best. So I'm really, really looking forward in 2014 to seeing The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The number one movie that I am looking forward to seeing in 2014 is... Godzilla. Oh my gosh, first off, it's 
if you haven't seen the trailer, um, go to the biggest screen that you can find, turn off the lights, crank up the sound, and just watch the trailer. Oh, it is so good. I ran around the office and just showed everybody. I put it on my Facebook. I tweeted about it. It is going to be awesome. Now, a lot of people made fun of me because one of my favorite movies of 2013 was Pacific Rim. And one of the reasons I love Pacific Rim is because essentially it's like Godzilla and Power Rangers together. And they were shameless about it. Like, I mean, they had a story and there were twists and there was all that. But at the end of the day, you had giant robots beating up giant monsters. And I love that. I love when a movie... Um, I'm also one of the very few people who liked Transformers. Uh, not because it's a good movie. It's a horrible movie. But it, it knows what it is. You go, you get your way oversized drink, you get your way oversized popcorn, you put on those 3D glasses and you eat and you're like, wow, and you're just blown away. It is just so exciting. And what I love, if you watch the trailer, is Godzilla is huge. Um, in the movie that was made back in the 90s, uh, I never was afraid of Godzilla. I was in awe of Godzilla, like, wow, that's huge. But there's a point in the movie where, uh, I think it's Matthew Broderick, is literally standing, like, right in front of Godzilla, and they want you to, like, feel the monster. Like, oh, he's just trying to find a home, and we're the bad people, and blah, blah. Not in this one. He's just, like, he's, like, tripping over skyscrapers, and just roaring, and knocking things down. And it just looked like, <laughs> I would lose my mind around this thing. Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited for this movie. And I know that there's probably going to be some artsy movie that, like, technically is better. Um, but I'm super, super, super excited for Godzilla. When he just makes that roaring noise at the end, I just, oh, I could just, like, if I could just have that on loop, and just like listen to that, like I could not be stopped because that is like, forget workout music, like that, I just think that <laughs> so, so awesome. I'm just so excited for that film. I can't even contain how great that movie is going to be. So everyone, grab your oversized drink, grab your oversized popcorn, and let's go see Godzilla mess some stuff up together. And those are my top 10 films of 2014 that I am pumped to see. What are your top 10? Do you think that some of my picks are wrong? Well, you're wrong. I'm just kidding, you can think what you want. But do let us know what you think in the comments down below. Did I miss something? Is there something I should be excited about? Are some of the movies I'm excited about really not gonna be that good? Let me know. Also, feel free to tweet me, at DJ Watts, or tweet us here at the show, at Daily Fix Show. Remember to subscribe to not only the website, but also to our Twitter, to our Facebook, and to our YouTube account. Thanks so much for joining us, and that was your Daily Fix.